So welcome back to How to Human. This is the couples edition that we are doing another format, another segment of the show where myself and my lovely wife, <clears throat> Don, that's what people just know you by. They know you by Don, right? Get on the mic and we're going to talk all things corporate life, professional life, entrepreneur life, and all the things that we do as a couple to make our livings, to, to just grow as people, as humans. And, uh, and I hope that you guys can relate to these topics. So the first one was a really good introductory episode, I think, to, to you and I. People loved it. Like the people that watched on YouTube, you can go find uh, just How to Human Podcast. Uh, type If you type in my name, Robert Garza, you'll find the show on YouTube for sure. You can also go to robertgarzamedia.com, and that'll be the home for anything that I do podcast related, any uh, booking inquiries, if you want to contact, email, inquire about the show, submit questions, that'll be where I direct people to. So if you want to just go, by the time this drops, uh, there should be an email subscription box. You can just put your email in there, and we'll start building our community of you know like-minded humans. How are you today? I'm good. I, I'm really still fixated on the fact that you're like, I think that's what everyone calls you and knows you by is Don, and I'm like, what else would they know me by? I don't know your government name. Oh, um, and I thought about that. I'm like, what are, they're not going to call me mommy. I mean, I'm like, mommy, Virginia, or Dawn. But then I was like, okay, we're going to go with kiddos. it. Only the kiddos. Only the kiddos. Or wifey, or boo, or hey, you. Yeah. So <laughs> it, this is fun. I'm, I'm glad we got to do this uh, so soon again. Maybe not soon enough, but we're going to try to get on a schedule. It's going to be hard during the summer because we have, uh, you know, the kids and activities and we want to do stuff with them and be very present. But where did you want to start the podcast today? Uh, so we we talked about last time, you know, entrepreneurship and, you know, you being an entrepreneur and myself being in corporate and how much I love corporate. But I'd really like to talk about like cohesively as a unit, how that works, like how being an entrepreneur works, being married to corporate life, how they differentiate with each other, like from each other, but also how we make them work together, but also how corporate doesn't work for you because you've done it and entrepreneurship solely doesn't work for me. But I yeah. still need. Yeah, that's no, a great topic. And I was yeah. telling Don, too, before we, we came up to record that I was listening to another show with uh, with author Simon Sinek. He was the guest on the show. And they were talking about professional corporate life structure and the environments and, and what do you call it? The the community, I guess. The environment. But it's the best word, right? Culture? The, the, the culture, right? Yeah. Good cultures, you know, toxic cultures, welcoming cultures, so on and so forth. And talking about Gen Z and how... They could potentially be, you know, the the softest, less least reliable generation. Sorry if you're Gen Z listening, but they're interesting subjects because when you try to when you try to forecast, like, how are we gonna, you know, tell our kids, like, well, how are we gonna guide them into the next generation of basically running the world? I always look at it this way: like, the things that we were taught were supposed to arm us with the abilities to basically run the world, right? Right. To a degree. Until all the other dinosaurs are gone and then we fully take over and then you're going to have, you know, the, the generations coming up do the same. And when you see just how, you know, soft for, you know, lack of better words and and it, unable, I guess, to overcome uh, uh, adversity, they are, you're kind of like, oof, I'm a little concerned. So to go back to the main topic, you wanted to talk about that. I, I want to talk about the same thing plus the cultures of job hopping and what's a good toxic what's a good versus toxic uh, environment at work Ooh, like that you know and then also the last point is that a lot of people despite loving their jobs and loving work where they work they almost all have a side hustle like you probably know somebody in your family and your friends your circle at work or whatever that has a side hustle and a lot of times it's because it's it's needed like they just need the extra revenue source or there's the fulfillment aspect of it like they could use the extra money like who can't but also there's a piece of them that yearns to have something that is they can call their own that they can sell they can create they can share with the world and and that's also an important part of it too do you want to start there Sure. Yeah. So, um, and then I can speak heavily to that because, you know, you've been an entrepreneur. What am what am I trying to say? Like a person owned, like you've worked for yourself, right? Self-employed. Yeah. That's the word I'm looking for. No Ooh. pressure here. Wow. You've done my this before. My brain. I know you did a lot of presentations today. I started at 730 this morning. So yeah. anyway, yeah, like self-employed. You've been self-employed for over 12 years, like if not longer than that. So, you know, for me, it's like, I've been in corporate for over 20 years now. Mm -hmm. Like I started my first corporate job while I was still in college. 
um, for a huge organization, Fortune 500, if not more, a huge hospital uh, here and well, there in the Houston area. Um, but yeah, like having a side hustle, and and for those of you that don't know what a side hustle is, I mean, yeah, let's that, just, could, that let's could be just, a thing. Let's just back it up to there. That's something that you do outside your regular nine to five, right? Um, so whatever it is, like for me, I do nutrition as a side hustle. Um, I do. We we did candles for a while. We did. You do you know, professional resume writing. I do professional resume writing. I do you know all kinds like life coaching things like that. All of those things, um, they keep me just gelled together as a human mm -hmm. like if I that even makes sense because like if I don't have that I feel like I die inside like as much as I love corporate I need that creative outlet like if I don't I feel like then I'm just a worker bee mm -hmm. you know what I mean so like I work my eight to five and then I get off and then I'm like, okay, that's when my creative side hustles come in. That's when my creative like comes out. That's when we have our couch conversations. I'm able to like take that corporate hat off, but also like just really deep dive into what I love. Like I'm not passionate about like giving presentations on how to buy products from my retail store. That's not what I'm passionate about. What I'm passionate about is like helping people and not in that sense of like, becoming better for themselves, like resume writing. How can they reach their full potential? How can I help you make a lifestyle change that is going to carry on for the rest of your life, right? Not just diet and nutrition and get skinny. It's like, how can I, Dawn, really engage with this person to where they really want to change their mindset and like just become a better human, right? Yeah. How to be a better human. Yeah. And so like that is, that's what brings me fulfillment. If I don't have that creative <clears throat> outlet and that side hustle, I'm not fulfilled. Like when we talk about like our love cups I, and I love to talk that, you know, hear about that and, and people understand it, right? Like when you're in a relationship, you have a cup, right? And if your cup is full, then your, your love cup is full. And if it's not, then, then what are we doing? Right? So it's like, we're constantly pouring and trying to make our cups full. Like my cup runneth over. If you believe in sorts of things, like when I can help other people, and it brings me fulfillment. And ironically, you were just, we started that by describing like it's not you know telling or showing a customer how to purchase whatever through our process. Ironically, if you if you dwindle it down, you are still and this is the word I wanted to, to highlight is impacting that person's you know their experience, right. their work experience, mm -hmm. their flow experience. So you're still having an impact on a person, and that's kind of what it is. Like it might be in a work related sense, but it's still you telling them, showing them, teaching them something. And it just might, it just so happens to be that this isn't in like your professional uh, setting. But if it was any outside setting, you'd have the same feeling about impact. Yeah, and the thing is, is, is what we call it in, in my job and my corporate my corporate hat on, it's a, they're, they're a journey. So in- Yeah, the customer journey? My customer journey. Yeah. So like my goal and my job is to ensure that they are having the highest level of white glove service throughout their customer journey, like delivering an exceptional customer journey. Mm -hmm. So- Yes, you're right. To that point, like what I do still kind of relays into that, but I want, I deep dive more into that outside of my side hustle. Like, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? I can really connect with somebody. I'm not connecting with somebody on a corporate level to that degree, but yeah. here I could be more intimate and like have those deep, like bonded conversations. So. Yeah, I was, I was having a conversation with a friend not too long, probably about a month ago about similar topics. You know, they're in, uh, in a regular job, you know, high-ish level, we'll say management to a degree, but it's nothing fulfilling and it gets boring. And I think we all have the same thing where it gets repetitive or you're just over it, or I've mastered it to a degree where like, I don't want to do this anymore because the challenge is gone, right? Ooh, and entrepreneurs... That's what? That's rough. Yeah, but entrepreneurs suffer from that all the time. Like, you know, the shiny object syndrome. Like, you've done this thing really well, or you do, you know it enough, and then you're like, what's the next thing? And you want to put something challenging on your plate when that's like the silliest thing you could do because you should take the things you know and just continue to refine them so you can be more efficient, whether it's making more money with it, you know, getting, uh, getting back more of your time because you're so good at, at the thing. Mm -hmm. Not, let me put something completely new on my plate every time I master something else because I need a change or I need something new. Like, that's not the right approach. Like, you're never going to... You're never going to find the fulfillment and like mastery if like I know it enough, I'm going to move on. I know it enough, I'm going to move on. So I battle with this every day, like all the time. The people that I work with, like I want to keep refining those those things that I do for them. But the other side of me, the super radical, creative, <laughs> crazy, like entrepreneur wants to always start something new. Right. And I think a lot of people can relate to that too, because you, you just, you're never like that. itch is never gone. Like you're always chasing the dragon. You're it's always something it's, and it could be honestly like a means to no end. Like it, it, it doesn't even mean that you want to do it because it's, there's like a certain carrot at the end of the finish line. You just want to like start a new race. You're like, why? This one's not even done. And if it is, like you could still you could still make the race more efficient. And the thing uh, that I 
have come to realize because I do that, right? I I have to always have a goal and I always have to have a plan. And then once I hit it, I'm like, what's next? What's next? The the next shiny object, like like a freaking raccoon, Mm -hmm. right? Um, My thing this year has been to bloom where I'm planted. And, you know, I had one of my senior, senior directors ask me, um, and when I was in Chicago, we, we had an hour long car ride. And this is like, senior director of, you know, of one of my companies. And I was like, he was like, you know, what are your goals? Like, what are your career goals? And I knew that I knew it was coming, right? I knew that question was coming because they try to poach you from different, you know, different areas when you get to a certain level um, in your career. And and so I, I knew this was coming. He's like, you know, Don, what are your, what are your career goals? And I'm like, you know, I really just want to bloom where I'm planted, right? So I started this new pivot in a new career in a new industry. Um, started from the bottom. Now I'm here. You know, as the first one promoted within six months. Like you know, definitely high achieving rock star alert, <laughs> right? And then uh, and then I got there, and it's like, do I want to keep going? Do I want to keep going? Do I want to level up? Like, what level do I say that's enough? And it's like, you know what? Right now, I'm really, really happy. Like I'm. I'm good at what I do. And I don't even mean that in a cocky and arrogant way. It's like, I'm dang good at what I do. And I want to perfect that craft, but then just get skill sets. Like now I have a new manager and I can learn so much from her and like carry that on. And like, they see such the potential for me to be in leadership. And I step back and I know I've talked to you about this. I'm like, I don't know if I want that. Like, I, I don't want, get me wrong. I'd like to have a small team to lead, but I don't know if I want to ever be on that senior director, executive, you know, C-suite level because then I don't have time for my side hustles. Yeah. Like, and it's a lot of, it's a lot of responsibility. And I, I like being a worker bee. Yeah. Like, and when you get up there, you don't worker bee, you delegate, you know yeah. what I mean? And, and, and which I do appreciate as well. Like I, I can still do that to a, t- to an extent, but I mean, if you don't work corporate and you don't have a side hustle, you can't understand what I'm saying. But like, I want to bloom where I'm planted right now. And then I, want to continue my side hustles. I don't want to keep going up the ladder, like all the way up the ladder to where I'm like, man, at the end of the day, I'm exhausted. I don't want to do anything. Yeah. Not everybody wants to run the ship. I don't want to run the ship. And even as entrepreneurs, like not every entrepreneur wants to be a founder or wants to be like the main head honcho president, whatever. And you know, same thing for me, like, so to go back to the point I was making a a little while ago about impact, when I was having this conversation that, you know, the person was like, well, why do you like, why do you like entrepreneurship? Like, why do you want to do your own thing? For starters, I could literally, if I was in an office for longer than seven days, I probably wouldn't be able to breathe. And I just would just (laughs) croak right there. I'd be like, this isn't worth it. Like, it's just nothing. It's not for me. Ironically, right? Because you can make impact at an office, at a a job. There's plenty of of good, meaningful work that you could do at any job. doesn't matter what it is, whether you're the janitor at a stadium or you're the player at the stadium creating entertainment for fans, you know? But for me, um, that, that impact and maybe other entrepreneurs listening, if you know, chime in somewhere on, on YouTube or on social or send me an email, Robert at Robert Garza media.com. I'm going to keep plugging that because first rule attempt at like branding the name, like a lot of these, uh, gurus may have seen online or a lot of these authors, a lot of anybody that has a, a thing that they're, they're trying to highlight. They just make their web, their, their name, the website. My name was already taken. So I just added media at the end of it. It's but uh, it fits. It fits, right? Yeah. But so when I look at podcasting and I look at uh, digital media uh, consulting or uh, digital adverts or whatever, the little all the little buckets that I have my hand in, it's all so fun to me because if this does well, it impacts this business bottom, this business's bottom line. If the if podcast does well, you get listeners and it's vanity metrics and it's awesome and it's cool. So all these different things have have a, have a plus to it, but. Even like the brick and mortar aspect of, of an entrepreneur starting a company or being a founder or creating a startup or whatever has its benefits too. You get to hire people like that's a great experience. Like the first time you hire somebody to work for you, you're like, holy shit, this is really cool, right? I know, I know we have our corporate hats on, but sometimes, you know, you get so passionate, it slips up. <laughs> but at the end of the day, for me, media has such an impact, has such an ability to, to be impactful that I've always been just fascinated with it and I have such a reverence for it because if you're talking to these microphones and into a camera and people like it, you're gonna know, you know? Right. It might take 10, 15, 20 years and you might be in your 40s or 50s like a Joe Rogan character was. He didn't start the podcast he was in his 40s and he's now in his mid-50s and you just never know. You know, Don Rickles or any any famous comedian, you can think of a ton of them that just, it never it didn't hit until they were older but media is the main point here, right? So the impact that you can have with a good media uh, set or a good media 
whatever I'm trying to say, like platform presence. presence yeah, yeah platform, presence platform. Yeah. Like that is what really fascinates me about everything. Not to mention the autonomy, like just being able to come and go as I want. That's that's a perk. But like just getting to get, being able to help people on, in various aspects, whether it's with the business in brick and mortar real life world or digitally, like. That's the coolest thing to me. Yeah. And so, and, and you know, it's funny that you say that because if I was in an <clears throat> office for seven days and I would, I would literally asphyxiate and you're yeah. like, I, I feel like you really would. Like if you had to, for some reason, well, first of all, you would never have to, you would never have to because you are that kind of hustler that you would, you wouldn't do it. You just yeah. wouldn't do it. Like there's not, there's not a way for you to survive and thrive if you go into an office. Like literally you would crumble up like Voldemort and just die. Yeah, I don't know the Harry Potter reference, but I, enough to where I get it. Yeah. Uh, okay, Wicked Witch of the West. Okay, melting, all right, gotcha, melting. gotcha. All right. You know that one. But yeah, it's like, why would, why, why, why would you do that? And yeah. like, it's like for me, like I tried the entrepreneurship, right? I, I tried to do it solely, just solo dolo, just doing it by itself. And I was miserable. Like, one, as organized as I am, I mean, at work, I have it all down to processes. You know, we talked about this last time. When I'm autonomous and like by myself and just can't do it, there's no structure. Like mm-hmm. I need the structure. Yeah, it's a battle. Like, when I and, I, and I'm just a person who thrives on structure and I, I try to instill that in my children too, not to where they have to have that constantly all the time, but also like it just helps. Like I know what's going on. They're the goes on there this time. You know, I do really well. Like it's good. I know what's next. When you're an entrepreneur, like, I mean, I guess you could do that, but if you don't have anybody to answer to, it's weird, right? It's yeah. just weird. It's like it's like the only time in my life that I'm like okay answering to someone. You know what I yeah. mean? Because like I have an authoritarian complex, like probably to the T. But For like sure. when it corporate, it's just like okay, cool, yeah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> <laughs> just listen to your husband. Yeah, we yeah. talked about that last we time did. too. But anyway, yeah. There was so plenty of just... examples from last week to this week of why you should have. But uh, go on. No. No, it was a working out reference. But anyway, I digress. Uh, yeah, it's just, um, I, it's not for me. Entrepreneur, solo entrepreneurship is not for me. Not in this point in my life. And I shouldn't say never because it could happen. Yeah. But like right now in this moment in time, like it's not where I thrive. Now, I need that outside of work because I need something to decompress. Like right, cooking mm-hmm. or, uh, you know, writing meal plans or, you know, helping someone write a resume. Like that's fun for me. But also, it can use it as a side hustle, right? It's creative. But yeah. my everyday, I need a little bit of structure. And that's, you know, refreshing about the organization that I'm in. So being in corporate versus being in mom and pop, right? So I've done both. And it, even when I say mom and pop, that's small business, corporate America still. Because the oil and gas companies that I worked for, one of them was, in particular, was very small, Um I hear the cars. It's so awesome. So like we live very close to a raceway guys and it's, you can hear the cars racing all day long, all day long. And it's so fantastic. So I just, it was amplified anyway. Um, so the difference even between mom and pop corporate and like huge corporate, like I work for a multi-billion dollar organization right now. Right. Um, and prior, my first job was also for a very big organization Two of those are just so the structure, the the leadership. It's so refreshing, and I say that like the the tenureship. Like there's someone on my team that's been at my organization now for over forty years. She's like, I can remember when credit cards because it's retail. I can remember when credit cards were on that machine and went and it like did the carbon. Oh copy. yeah, yeah. And I'm like <clears throat> forty years, and that that's just to me that's impressive because you know you talk about like job hopping and things like that, like. People at Lowe's don't do that. They just don't. Mm. They just don't do that. And I don't even know if I'm supposed to say my name, but hey, I did. <laughs> like that people follow yeah, on LinkedIn. Yeah, exactly. But the, you know, the thing is, is like 19 years, you know, they've been there since they were 16. The CEO of our company started in the store and now he's the CEO of, yeah. the, of the company. Like <clears throat> when you have good leadership, when you have good structure, when you know what the heck you're doing, you have those SOPs, those standard operating procedures in place, your business is going to thrive. And like, I love that. I love that corporate structure feel. When I was at Methodist, I was at the Methodist Hospital in Houston, huge hospital organization. I was at Memorial Hermann, very much the same. Like, it's just a good feeling, you know? Now, for those that don't, like the small mom and pops that I've been at, well, we've been together, like, Mm -hmm. kick rocks, man. Like, you don't have your stuff together. There's a reason why these big organizations are successful. Yeah. And so... To piggyback more off of like my side of things, the entrepreneur side and the media side is uh, like you love 
everything's just subscribed. Like, you loved it at the mom and pop stuff, mm-hmm. but then like once you get to the higher level stuff, it's just a whole different world, right? It's a whole different ball game. It's like playing in the minor and the major leagues. It's like playing like T ball versus playing in the MLB. Yeah. It's just a different thing. Like it's still fun. Don't get me wrong. Still pays the bills. You're still athletic. You're still running and getting a sweat on, but Ooh, the perks, man. When you're making those millions versus it's not even about money. It's just the perks, right? You get insurance and mm-hmm. you get, you know, that kind of stuff. Like, yeah. It's different. And it's also the impact you get to have. Like when you work at a small, even if it's a big company, but it's still on the smaller side of things, you're only able to do so much because that right. ship can only carry you so far, right? Or it only has so many resources at your disposal. It's the resources, right? Money, to yep. all that kind of stuff, right? Access. So for like media, uh, there was another point that Simon Sinek was making on the show about, what was it? They were talking about culture. They were talking about, man, it'll probably come to me here in a second. But, you know, for those of you listening that maybe can't vibe with that and you're on my side where you're like, I just, you know, I, I know there's great companies out there, but it's just not for me and I really want to do my own thing. Like, try to find the the aspect of what you enjoy. Like, let's just say that it's media, for instance. Is it YouTube? Is it podcasting? Is it writing? It's really hard to, you know you know, say that writing could take you really far, but there's still obviously either books or blogs or whatever. Resume writing. Resume writing. Yeah. Like maybe you use that specific skill in like, and that's what I was going to say, niche it, niche it down to a degree. A hundred percent. And man, I'm still trying to think of the point uh, he was making about this. It was like, it, it, and it kind of referenced the, his other book, Start With Why, about like why we do certain things. But since I can't remember exactly what it was, it did, he did start going into how everybody always wants to work, you know, in, oh, in America. Yeah. So whether you're the entrepreneur or you're the corporate person, there's like pros and cons to this because, and especially post pandemic, for instance, is what he was going into with was that we used to have these environments where we had a job that we loved, but we would, we'd be in the office and we'd leave the job and then you would go to like happy hour with your coworkers mm-hmm. or, or just friends and basically complain about your day to your friends, to your community, <laughs> right. even though you love the job, but there was this thing that would happen after work. You would, it would be another type of community, right? Another type of like tribe, uh, connection and you love your job, but you're still complaining about it and you're feeling like accepted and welcomed. But now like that's gone because everyone's working remotely. So right. for a lot of the people, like entrepreneurs are pretty used to working alone. Right. For the corp for the professional types, like it's it's doing something to their y'all, to y'all's brains where now you're just you're at home and like you might connect via Zoom out after work, but it's like I've been on you know, I've been on camera with customers or with other coworkers even all day. Like, right. we're not going to have a virtual mixer. Like, we did that when we thought the world was going to end and, you know, we're, that's the only thing we had left was a Zoom mixer. I've never even met maybe one of my coworkers. Yeah. Like, in person. And at first it was hard for you. Yeah. Well, Working be, from home, working the, from the virtual home. stuff. Yeah, so I've been working remote for almost three years now and the first two was horrible because it wasn't on camera. Mm-hmm. Right? So mm-hmm. it was, I didn't have that interaction. Oh, yeah, yeah. I talk to people all the time. Now I'm on camera. I mean, last week I gave a presentation to over 450 people. Like, not at one time. Like, 400 people, 100 people at a time. Like, it's ridiculous. I'm on camera all the time. So yeah. it's uh, it's fantastic. But I see what you're saying. Like, you know, it, it's, it's a totally different... It's just a whole totally different vibe, right? It's just, yeah. you know, when you don't have that connection it's yeah. hard and you're autonomous you're autonomous all the time like you work by yourself literally we work both work remote you're upstairs i'm downstairs and i barely come upstairs like we meet for lunch and then we go so like it's pretty sweet though we do have like our, we do have our cooler meeting right yeah. and then we're like hey you know whatever i'll come up here and you know ding dong and you know come in here scary scary yeah literally the other day guys it was so funny he was like into whatever he was doing i have no idea what it was when I come up the stairs and I'm coming into his office, I always say, ding dong. Like, hey, I'm coming. No response. I'm like, okay, ding dong. So I walk in and I just stand there and I'm like looking at him and he turns and he literally almost pooed his pants. It was hilarious. He was so mad. Robert hates to be scared. I hate to be startled, especially. He really does. And it's so funny because our daughter loves to startle him, which is even funnier. But like, holy moly. And he gets so mad, and it's just like, I'm, I'm sorry, I can't help it. You didn't hear my ding dong. Makes me more mad that I know you took enjoyment in it, even though you didn't laugh in the moment. You laughed going down the stairs. Oh, I laughed really hard. I was giggling on the inside. The but worst. anyway, anyway, going back to yeah, so entrepreneurship, <clears throat> corporate America, like you, you obviously don't thrive 
in corporate. I no. don't thrive in entrepreneur, but we make it work, right? We do, yeah. And I love that. I love that we don't... Now, if we were both entrepreneurs or if we were both corporate, it would be just as fine too, like, you know, but it, it works for us. Yeah, yeah. And I like that. And so we're able to support each other in a way that is like un, unlike the rest of the world. Like yeah. everybody else is... I feel like they're either both corporate, they're both entrepreneurs. It's hard to have both, but like we find this medium and how do you feel that we make that work the best? Like... How do I feel that we make that work the best? Yeah. We didn't try to change each other when we got together no. in, in, in any aspect. No. So and it was we, tough. It wasn't tough. Oh, we we oh. genuinely grew into the like the relationship we have now. True. By letting it just kind of... Naturally goes. Yeah. Like, sure, if we think back hard enough, you know, what's it been now? Like six years or something like that? Five Almost or six years? Like, yeah. You, you could probably pinpoint aspects of like, I'm working to... Like, for instance... Perfect example. I used to love being up till one, two o'clock in the oh, morning. Gosh. That was the best. That was for me. It was like you're creative. That is my time to just like do what I do, whatever it was, whether it was at the, on a particular day watching like any like a Udemy course or e learning type thing or reading or whatever, or it was actually editing something or putting uh, a new website together, whatever it was. I loved being up late at night. Well, she'd go to sleep like grandma over here at nine thirty, ten o'clock, and you know. I saw that it wasn't the best. Like the last thing you want to do is like if your partner, whatever wife, uh, husband is at work all day, and then they get home, and you're kind of like you're kind of barely gearing up. You're like I'm about to like really go at it in about two or three hours. Meanwhile, the other person is going to go to bed. Like it, at a certain point, you have to come to the realization that it's not going to create the best uh, just home with, life, home life, and you know dynamic is the word i was looking for yeah uh but it did take a while so that was one of it, one example we found for our me cadence. we found our cadence yeah. and now it works like now we both go to bed pretty much at the same time like if you have to stay up later i'm like okay cool whatever i'll just go to mm-hmm. bed but you know it's we've found our cadence you weren't you were usually a get up early person now we kind of get up at the same time like when the kids are here it's totally different like it's we've just found our groove like it wasn't necessarily always hard but like you know, the challenges, like even the pandemic, I mean, which I know is super strange. It doesn't happen all the time. Thank goodness. But yeah. like, you know, when we both lost our jobs and we were both unemployed, like it was so easy for us to pick up and go. Like we're also hustlers on the inside, mm-hmm. right, too. So like not everybody has the drive and ambition that we do. No, it's crazy. And I love that we match each other on that. Like it's not like you may be a little bit more driven for entrepreneur stuff, but I'm more driven for corporate stuff, right? So it's like, yeah, we talked about the other day, you know, hey, do you have do you have the skill set to have, you know, whatever money, you yeah. know, just like blow off money. And I was like, I got real offended. Right. Yeah. But it's like I I work real hard at my corporate like yeah, I've worked. I've busted my tail for the last 20 years to get where I'm at. Right. To go from started from the bottom. Now I'm here and I just want to keep going up to just like maybe one more degree. But um, yeah, it's just it's 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 not common to find people with the same drive as we do. And I don't mean to like sound arrogant, but it is true. Like there's not a lot of people that have the drive that we do to continue to keep hustling. Yeah. And it's not, you know, we're all wired so differently and it kind of, you know, it's like how many times can somebody possibly say that? But it's true. Like it begs repeating it. it. It's, we are wired differently and it. A lot of these concepts that we might be talking about, people have heard, but it, you, you have to hear it again and again until you hear it at the right time, in the right place for you. And then it clicks. And then it just clicks. So you could be doing something right now that you hate and you hear something we say and for whatever reason, something just clicked in you and all of a sudden you, something changes. Yeah. My thing is, is like, you may not love what you do right now. <clears throat> right you I there I have not loved every job I've been in you might never love something you do but you like it enough to say this is my thing right but then find something that you do love to do mm-hmm. like right so we talk about side hustles like you know what you may not love your everyday like you know dig in concrete yeah. or do whatever but what can you do <clears throat> on the side that makes you happy yeah that still brings you an extra income or even if it doesn't pay you right now maybe it will eventually right yeah. so it's just like find Find joy in something. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I, people that sit around and just kind of like him haul and like complain, like you're talking about going to the water cooler and just complaining after work. Like, what are you doing? Yeah. Like, I understand you don't have to like your job. Uh, you know, in America is weird because we are such a like a go getter. I didn't put my phone on do not disturb this time, which is weird. Like we're such a, we're such a, a fast paced rat race, kind of like all hustle and bustle, which we like it because like, we're from here, obviously. It's 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 ingrained in, in like our culture and, and whatever. But other countries are different. And if we just you know exclude the other countries and we look at America, like for me being like a always like on a ten, wanting to like 
do stuff, get things done, start the next thing, you know, keep it going. Like there's really, there's days off because I try to just be present when the kids are here and like obviously weekends or whatever. Like if, if there's a reason to not have your computer or your phone out, I'll look, I'll find it. I'll, you'll be like, yeah, I'm totally down. It was a different story 10 years ago, but we're all so ingrained in like these jobs, like these things that we're doing that it's not really supposed to be that way. Like ironically, that's like half of my brain half the time is thinking that way and then I just punch the microphone. And then the other half of the time, my brain's like, no, you softy, like keep it going. Like, And I don't know, that, like, that's what I think a lot of entrepreneurs have to deal with where they're trying to balance this lifestyle where not everybody can relate to the way that their their hamster is constantly going. like just drinking NOS energy drink <laughs> and like pedal to the and metal kind the of thing. Going yeah, uh, and then but also is like trying to be like a quote unquote balance, which I don't believe in balance, but There's a balanced no human being and, and juggle all the other things. You know, show me a really high level athlete or high level executive and I'll show you 15 things that they're lacking in. Bad relationships, bad friendships, you know, bad, uh, all kinds of stuff bad parent because they they they're you, it takes something to be that excellent at one particular thing yeah you know they talk about and i hear people talk about work-life balance and, and there's not a there's not such a thing something is going to have one or oh, the other yeah. at, at one point and and you know there let's, might, let's 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 actually hold that thought but let's let's say that again for the people in the back yeah let's say it louder for the people in the back there is no such thing as work-life balance no there's really not you're kidding yourself if you say that um you're gonna give one or the other more attention and it's constantly a struggle and, and that's okay yeah that it, is okay yeah. we are human but you know to your point about you know becoming consumed in, in in your life and on your job i did that right so we've talked about this you know prior to being laid off in 2020 and only guess i got to a point in my career where i was like consumed like my, i was that was everything to oh, me. Yeah. i created my own position i niched down <clears throat> so niche that i was like I only a handful of people did that. Only a handful of people, and still only a handful of people do. I mean, I still have people calling me, you know, hey, do you want to come back and do, you Might know, only guys back and do it. regulatory? Ah, kick rocks. But when I got laid off, it was devastating. I mean, devastating, Like, guys, guys I, was, I was literally, I grieved that loss. And I tell people that, and they kind of look at me funny. I'm like, I did. I, you would have thought John Wick just got his dog shot. That's how Don was feeling. Well, I mean, first of all, a pandemic... I lost my job. You lost your job. Like, it was a devastating no, time. No, no, I get it. Don't put it on me. Don't deflect. No, We're talking not, about you. But, you know, you're just, like, don't be insensitive. I'm kidding, I know. No, it was, it was a really big struggle because I identified myself so much. I identified as a corporate worker. Um, I identified so much with that job. And I and from then on, once I recovered <laughs> from that loss and grieved it and, like, moved on, I decided then what? I was not going to do that again. Life is not going to be all about work. Yeah. Like, when I want to cl clock out, I clock out. Like, when I walk away, I walk away. If I dream about work, I'm doing it wrong. I should not be dreaming about my job. And when I start fall asleep and I'm like, oh, I didn't. I'm like, nope, get out of my head. You don't get to walk through my mind with your dirty little feet, corporate America. Like I get to decide when I shut mm -hmm. you off and I get to decide when I turn you on, you know? Yeah. And it, for the entrepreneur, that's a struggle because there it's, might be <laughs> yeah. certain days or weeks where you're just like, I can't shut this part off. Like I am so all in on this thing and I got to keep going, going, going and work on it and finish it and refine it that I understand. Like it's just some, some weeks, some months, maybe, you know, there might just be like a four five, six month period where you're just, you ignore everyone else. Like you, everything falls to the wayside going back to what we were saying, there's no balance. So if you go all in on something, mm -hmm. marriage might be a little like, uh, if he doesn't come out of that office, like we're going to have problems or maybe not spending time with the kids or, or whatever, like it's going to happen. So that's it's, a struggle with an entrepreneur too. And in those instances, guys, like, that's where you and I balance each other out. Like it's communication, right? Like if you can't communicate with your spouse, like, Hey man, and you've told me several times, Don, I've got to do this. Oh, I've yeah. got to oh, buckle yeah. in. Yeah. And so if I'm less present, this is why. And I'm like, okay, well, at least you told me. Now, had you done that and totally withdrawn and like hold away, I wouldn't have known. But if you can preface that, if you can communicate that and it's received, then it's fine, right? Yeah, and even if it wasn't received well, I'd be like, sorry, this has got to get done. So, But I'm letting you know. I'm giving you the warning. But the thing is, too, that goes back to communication <clears throat> just in general. Like, you know what I mean? You and I are excellent communicators now. It hasn't always been that way. And I'm still working on it. I'm a work in progress. Robert, if you didn't know, is a wonderful communicator. And I was not. Now, I feel like I can effectively communicate and express my opinions and my emotions. And they're received and perceived well. But, you know, it's just... If you can't communicate, like, 
Communication is the key to every successful relationship, both personal and professional. I will say that 10 million times, and I will say that again louder for the people on the back. Communication is the key to every successful relationship personal or professional. And if you don't believe that, you're kidding yourself. Yeah. I, you, there's, I always say to people, like, there's no such thing as over-communicating. I've always thought that. And it came from a lack of having uh, no communication, basically, growing up with parents that are, you know, and a lot of us can relate, like, traditional parents, like, they're not going to, they're not going to ask you, like, how you're feeling or or your opinion on anything. It's going to be, is this it, is how is it is. Look at yeah, right, <laughs> kind of thing. Uh, but to go, I wanted to, before we wrap up the show, we're going to do like five more minutes and, and we're going to keep it to our 40 minutes so that people on their commutes and people, you know, doing their workouts, which check up on our, on our workouts. We knock them out about 45 minutes. You know, this is, is it week two of the challenge? I'm trying to like flex, but I can't because my, oh, my biceps hurt so bad. So it's sore. like tight right now. Like it, it looks like I'm flexing guys, but I'm really not like, okay. Can't even do it. No. It just hurt. It kind of hurt. hurts. It hurts in a good way. Yeah. It hurts in a good way. It hurts so bad. Yeah. It, it hurts, hurts so good. good. <laughs> Anyway. Uh, what was I saying? I don't know. Something about five minutes and yeah. Well, we got well, man. Yeah, that was a point that I was gonna make too Sorry. about no, no, that's fine. I wanted to bring up because we did want to give an update on the challenge. Yeah, right? let's give an update on the challenge. We're a weekend mm-hmm. today is officially seven days in. We had our best couple friend come visit this weekend, so we didn't derail. Like, well, I don't... We, we did in the sense that we were sick, or I was at least sick again. Second, like cold sinus infection in a, in the same season for the first time ever in my life. I think. And then we felt better, and then they came, and we had yeah. a great time. So. Anyway, we had our best couple friends come over. We didn't eat like, you know, buttheads. You know, we still stayed within our limits. You know, we don't feel miserable, but we got workouts in, right? Yeah. So we've been doing these DLB workouts. Guys, I'm just telling you, even if you're not doing the challenge, she has some killer workouts. We haven't done supersets in so long. And if you don't know what that is, it's like coupling a two movements and doing you know one movement and then one movement and doing four rounds of it so it's a super set you drop set where you drape, drop weight each time um it's fantastic and our muscles are so fatigued like i don't work chest and tr- i mean i do work chest but i don't work my chest out very often or my my arms so i am dead but i'm excited about the challenge yeah i'm super stoked i'm glad you're doing it with me we are actually working out together like uh, tandem, which is kind of crazy because we don't do that ever. Mm-hmm. I can't remember the last time I had a workout partner. I hate working out with partners because one, they either really suck, they don't know what they're doing. I'm spending time like educating them on mm-hmm. proper movements, things like that. Now, if I'm training someone, totally different, right? But working, yeah, but not for your own work. Yeah, when I'm working out and, and I have to explain to you how to do something, it's so just not it's what a I problem want. it's a problem <clears throat> but you and i know what we're doing mm-hmm. so yeah it's fun it's been fun uh i think i, I remember just slightly what the point i wanted to make and that was like we were we were kind of rounding out talking about identifying with our work right mm, mm, right yeah, 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 yeah. so word of the wise to the entrepreneur is is just try to uh just not and i guess the corporate person alike maybe you can speak to it here I'll give you the final word you know love what you do try to find as many things that you love to do to do to make a living and then find other purposes for life, right? Like we can't just get lost in the sauce of work all the time because let's be real guys, like th- this is where like now that I, I'll be 34 this this year in October, the, the half of my brain that wants to constantly be productive, be efficient, get things done, find the next project, help the next you know person or business or whatever, and then feed, you know, my, basically it feeds my lifestyle or feeds my livelihood being able to do that, which is also another motivator. But like, it's not that crucial. And that's one of these words. I don't don't have any tattoos, but if I had one, I'd probably tattoo that phrase on me somewhere. I've been saying it forever. Like most things, most things, unless they're actually life or death, are not that crucial. And too many of us spend time worrying about things that never even end up happening. And it drives me crazy because time is fleeting. We don't have a lot of time on this planet. And we don't have a lot of time to just worry about legit nonsense, whether it's, and if we, we can all put a finger up and think about all the things that you do as an entrepreneur in a day for your life, for your livelihood, and as the professional, and on top of all those things in your eight to 12 hour day, you can think, man, my mom got this going on. My sister's got that going on. I got this coworker that's really going through something. I got somebody at church. I got somebody at, and you're also thinking about all these different people and their problems. And most good people want to help people that are in problems that are in their life. So you, then you wonder to yourself, why am I so drained? Like, why am I so tired? Why am I so pissy? Why am I so anxious? Why am I so, you know, mad or, or upset? It's a lot. It's all those things. But because we get so lost in the sauce of work, we almost forget that like, oh, wait, I'm carrying 15 other things that might not necessarily be my circus or my monkeys directly, as Don would say, 
but you're a good person. You're going to be thinking about those things. So try yeah. to try it, to work through so it. It's so funny that you say that because you know I'm a big proponent of mental health. I'm a big proponent of therapy. You know what's a better word? Mental fitness. I just heard that. Okay, I, I yeah, like I'm that. a big proponent of mental fitness, like keeping your brain active, yeah. keeping your mind active, but also just act, you know actively taking care of your mental health, right? So I'm a big proponent of therapy. We've known this. I've been in therapy probably mm-hmm. since I was 18. I'm 39. So you do the math. 20, 20. Why did you say do math? We don't 29, like doing 29, 20, 18, 15, whatever. How much is, how much is that? Do you do the math? 18 to 39. So 18, 28, 38, 19 years. Yeah. Okay. Almost Ooh. 20 years, yeah. Wow. That was intense. It's been a long day. We do this at, we do this at yes. the, it's 7.30. But hey, okay. So t- to wrap this up, big proponent of mental health, big proponent of that, right? Mm-hmm. So, you know, I had my therapist tell me, she was like, Dawn, you, I'm an empath, right? So that basically means I, I feed off other people's emotions. If you're sad, I'm sad. If someone's hurting, I'm hurting. That's just how I am. I, I just naturally have always been that kind of human, which is also why I like to help people. Mm-hmm. She's like, it drains your energy. You're definitely carrying around the energy of other people, right? So it's almost like a, a energy vampire. Yeah, yeah. She's like, you need to just... At the end of the day, wash it off. Well, the energy vampires are the people that take your energy. Well, take your energy. Yeah. But right, but, but I, I, I basically, I'm carrying around everybody else's mm-hmm. energy. So she's like, at the end of the day, you just need to let it go. You know, do do your downtime, do your yoga. And one, if you know me, I don't do yoga. I don't do meditation. I can't do any of that stuff. But I said, you know what I'm going to do? When I take a shower at the, in the evening, because you should all bathe before you go to bed, you dirty rascals, um, wash it all off. Right, yeah. just wash off the energy of other people. Just, just start over with a clean slate the next day. And she's like, "That's an awesome like analogy, metaphor, whatever you want to call it, adjective, whatever." Just, she's like, "Just wash it off." So that, that's what I do at the end of the day. I'm just like, "Okay, scrub a dub dub, you're yeah. gone. Scrub a dub dub, you're <clears> gone." <throat> yeah, that's great. And uh, one more thing too, I, we were talking about the, sh- it was the top of the show. I, I was talking about impact, like why I like doing you know the entrepreneurial things. I get to impact a lot of people or doing media, like it reaches a lot of people, and then therefore there's an impact on them. Yeah. And uh, one of the reasons I think why, or maybe I'm just assuming that that's like such a thing to me or for me, is that growing up, my dad would always, anytime, like if I was younger, like let's just say like the kid's age, like super young, like, mm-hmm. you know, five to 10-ish range. And even still now, he would say this phrase when he met somebody, either when he met somebody new or I was with him, let's say that we were doing some, I, I grew up like working with cattle and stuff and we'd be building a, a fence, for instance, we'll say. And I met a friend of his, uh, I'd be like 10 or 11 and I'd be his helper, you know, my dad's helper that day and he'd have some other helpers around. And he would always, introduce, my dad always introduced himself in, in Spanish to be like, Israel Garza para servirles. And it was always this like, you know, his regards are like at your service kind of thing. So, and I said this yesterday too, and I, I'm sure you caught it, but like, I do genuinely feel like I'm I'm just here to be of service. Mm-hmm. You know, and that sounds weird. I'm not very religious. We might talk about that on other episodes, but like the act of being of service really is for me, like the thing that, that there is to do yeah, while we're 100%. here. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I love that. Yeah. I love that. And that my manager tells me all the time, she's like, I'm a servant leader. Mm-hmm. Like I'm here to serve you. I'm your servant leader. And I love that. And then there's leaders that are not servant leaders yeah, that are well, not the also, best leaders. They also suck. So. Yeah. Whatever. All right, well, I'll give you the final word. Uh, this was fun. This is the second episode of How to Human Couples Edition. Yeah. What do you want to leave people with? What Do, um, do you want to tell them about anything you're working on, or you want to just wait till it's more more done done? Oh, no, I mean, I can. So uh, I'm actually starting a whole nother umbrella under this Robert Garza Media. Mm. Um, we're going to be having a Manning Your Life. So this will be really exciting. It, more news to come, but I'm, I'm uh, in the process of creating a cookbook. Right now, so I'm going to be... And it spawned from Manning Your Health, it's Manning, which was... Yeah, so Manning, Manning Your Health is my nutrition business. Uh, it still is, yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm, I kind That was just one sliver of yeah, it. Yeah, one sliver. So now we're, we're branching out into this Manning Your Life. So, you know, Manning is my last name, uh, Manning slash Garza. Yeah. Um, but Manning... It's another conversation, you know, too. Yeah, Manning Your Life. So I, I'm really excited. You know, I'm going to be doing this this cookbook, so more to come on that. Um, pretty exciting, uh, you know, 30, 30 or so pages, 30 or so recipes. Um, and then I'm, you know, talking about my resume building and you know how i can help individuals you know start from the bottom and get where they want to get climb yeah. that corporate ladder whether it or is, even if you're already high yeah, level it's even high level but you know and, and we'll go into this more later but like expanding on the skill sets you have i hear too many people say well i'm just hmm. this but like i said you're also this and this and this so with that i will leave you with uh some parting words uh communication let's do it like guys there's no such thing as over communicating, as Rob said, right? Yeah. So uh, go out there, you know, tell somebody you love them today, right? 
That's a very good point. Yeah. It's and very, uh, flex your nice muscles. <laughs> flex. Uh, I didn't even flex. I like flexing on the other camera. <laughs> <laughs> our set, yeah, right. Our set isn't quite. Done. It's it's barely a set. Even if you can, only, if you can only see what the set would look like, you'd be like, "That's where you guys record this amazing content." I could literally lift up my foot and put it on camera right now, but it's <sighs> know, not right? that kind of show. Uh, and I say that because we, I left it in last week, where I was like, "All right, now someone's got to hit stop." I know I got to get up, but so my legs don't hurt today. We have to figure out a way to make this more efficient because I feel Paper, like rock, scissors, shoot. Ready? <sighs> I was gonna say I feel like this is gonna be a really big show, and we need to be professionals. Okay? We are professionals, and pre- I, guys, the other day I tried to get somebody to paper rock scissors shoot for a decision and they wouldn't do it and i was so bummed out so robert are you ready have you seen real quick last thing the you said that 20 minutes i ago. know i know people are enjoying it let's be real okay yeah. the real of like oh the younger brother sees older brother on tv crossing the stage like a live stream of his of his graduation no and he sets well he sets that they perfectly he's in front of the camera mm-hmm. and as soon as his brother comes across he they, they they paper rock scissored. Oh no, and that's so cute. Is, yeah, and like the brother at home lost and he like throws his hat down. The guy graduating like one. It was just so funny. Like okay. they timed it perfectly. Yeah, so well, let's do ready. it. Ready? Paper rock scissors shoot. Boom! You got to do it. Best two out of three. Ready? Paper rock scissors shoot. Boom! Dang it! Boom! All and right. that's how you win at you paper guys. rock scissors. Well, I'm only doing the audio. Bye.